This is a rainy day let's play. This is not IGN. This is not GameSpot. This is not your average bullshit game review talking about how pretty the graphics are or how smooth the gameplay is. This is a let's play and this is useful. Games are more important than their graphics or how you feel playing it. It is an expression of love and a conversation between designer, system, and player. And Retrograde is a fantastic example of that. Welcome to Rainy Day Let's Play. If you have not been introduced to uh, Retrograde, um, basically what we're looking at here is um, a PSN game that was made over the course of four years. A winner is you! give you some time to read that. Um, but uh, this is a game unlike um, really anything. I, I honestly can't think of any good examples off the top of my head right now of something that's quite like this game. Um, and I'm going to throw you into it right now. Um, and you're going to see what I'm talking about. I can explain the gameplay like anyone else does. Um, but we won the game, so it's over now. That's how this game works. You just start it and you win. It's perfect. It's like, we don't even need anything else. Thank you for Fluffy the Poodle for making this. And Billy Shatner. Oh. Okay, but really now. This is Retrograde. Retrograde was a ma game made, um, I guess a few months before I released this video. I think three months or so, um, by 24 Karat Studios, which is helmed by Matt Gilgenbach, um, which is pretty important because like a lot of other uh, indie games that are coming out right now, you have um, a lead designer whose influence is really heavy on the game's creation, like Fez or like Super Meat Boy, um, and this is a game that, I mean, after four years of being created by one guy and his team, um, it really reflects a lot of uh, emotion out of and uh, so what you're looking at right now is that we are like retroactively sucking up bullets that we have previously fired as uh, this character Rick Rocket um, the time the space-time universe is unraveling and this is our way of putting it back together since we did all this damage to screw it up um, I guess the first, the first critique right off the bat is this idea of, uh, like, conservation and, um, oh man, if I didn't fire all these shots at once, this would be a lot easier. Um, and it really plays to, plays off this idea of Rick Rocket's arrogance for doing all, doing all these destructive actions. Um, but just like a, a rhythm game, um, like DDR or like, uh, Guitar Hero, you, um, get points for hitting it right on the beat. If you get it a little off the beat, like or miss it like I just did, um, you lose your combo and you get take some damage. Difference is, with Retrograde, you can reverse the clock, like I just did right there. Um, and it takes up a little bit of that Retrograde retro fuel uh, that the shows on the ship's little meter right in the middle of the ship, also on the right side of the screen, which is a nice little redundancy. Uh, but then you have other moves. Uh, you can use star power, like I just did, um, which doubles your combo and makes it a hell of a lot harder to hit things. Uh, it also makes the music a lot louder, which is kind of fun to get you really into the spirit. Um, so, what you're uh, seeing and hearing right here is an uh, attempt to basically undo the destruction that we had previously caused to the best of our ability. Um, if you look at the score up above, it's not actually going up, but it's going down. And that's an important idea because um, the idea is that if we do the best job possible and 100% everything as perfectly as we did it originally, the score will hit zero. Which, as high scores show, it's not very possible. <laughs> if, if people beating Super Hexagon is any example, Oh, see, I missed, uh, wasn't paying attention, and I missed that, uh, note right there. Got it. Got it on the flip side. 
still breaks your combo, but you got it. If people can beat a game like Super Hexagon, you'd think they might, uh, everyone together collectively as the internet might be able to 100% every one of these songs or something like that. No, no. There are two songs, I believe, on their easiest difficulty, which is, you saw the difficulties, there's like six of them. Um, the easiest difficulty is just two tracks, um, and two of the tracks have a, high, a low score of zero. Um, so here comes the rockets. This is really uh, simple controls, is that you just hit the X to do everything other than using your overdrive, which is the uh, R2 button in this case. And uh, everything else is just different ways of using the X button. So in this case, I'm tapping X a whole bunch to unfire all of these missiles I fired, which are on like the quarter beats. So if I do it well enough, I'll get max points out of those. That's where the hardest part is, um, in most cases. So, we beat the level. That went really well. A winner is us. Um, and you get a rank, and now we can actually see what happened um, forwards ways instead of backwards ways. So it's a very weird, trippy kind of game. You can even see that I, how I did the uh, overdrive. Alright, next level, Reverse Rhapsody. Rick was trying to find the nearest Glorig's best coffee, but he was too cheap to pay for the updates for his universal positioning system. At his supposed destination, there are no coffee shops in sight, so Rick took his rage out on the Exnorians. So this is a new level. Um, every level has kind of that, that idea that Rick Rocket is really just a douchey Buzz Lightyear. Um, and this one starts right off with these little plasma waves, which is one of the other different kind of uh, notes, I guess you'd say, or pulses or something, um, in that you just hold the X button. So you have three different ways of interacting with laser fire. Oh, missed a note. We're not going to rewind, because uh, not really, not really the time to. The goal is to get through this pretty quickly. So. The idea is that not only do I have to avoid, um, not only do I have to hit getting these on time, but I also have to avoid oncoming fire behind me, um, and that's where things can get tricky. On top of that, we'll see later there's going to be a lot of, um, a couple of boss fights in totally classic side-scrolling shooter action, um, and uh, those are going to be tricky because we're going to have to watch out for oncoming fire, a couple other enemies that we run into that fire in different ways than just these single shots that are coming from the left to the right, uh, but also some threats directly from the front. Uh, and you'll see, it's just, it gets to be a little nuts, to be honest. Um, pro strat is really all you can do to help yourself is just try to follow the oncoming notes. Um, keep your eyes peeled to the right side of the screen, and hopefully nothing will hit you from behind. Um, like usually you can follow the path of the notes inwards and avoid things coming from behind. But we'll see how that gets uh, tricky in some of the later levels when they purposely do things to mess with that. Um, so as I said before, we have the uh, lead designer Matt Gilgenbach who uh, is an ex-industry person. I'm actually not totally sure where at or what his roles were. I'm pretty sure it was um, some kind of testing position where just a lot of long hours, very repetitive work, um, and that was where this inspiration came from to basically not only um, revolt against working in the industry like we're seeing with many indie projects, um, but also where you get this idea of uh, being in a weird different kind of control. Um, his testings usually involved uh, replaying the game in reverse, and so he liked that idea and, and took it through all the way through in this different, different way. Uh, but the other thing is, and this has been my interactions uh, actually getting to meet Matt Gilgenbach, but uh, he is uh, a very, very passionate, very intimate, and very um, OCD person. He's very obsessive-compulsive like a lot of great game designers are. And uh, this has become 
such a labor of love, and a lot of that is because of why this took four years to make was that, um, like other games like Fez, which also had a long development cycle, was as you create a game and keep progressing with it, you realize that um, as the game evolves in front of you, kind of like as a, as a pottery would evolve um, on the wheel, you realize that all of your previous work with it um, may not actually t add up. So he makes this big awesome game that works really well, but then he realizes that it looks like not the way he wants. Not bad, just not the way that he's looking for. And so you can really see those those extra years put in in the uh, styles and designs, um, like these huge, vast backgrounds that really evoke the idea of huge spaces that we're flying backwards through. Oh, there's another level done, and we're ranked 693rd on the leaderboard with a new low score. So very cool, uh, very different ways to challenge what our ideas of winning a game is. <laughs> now we can see how we had screwed all this up while it goes forward. Alright, next one, Retrograde Groove. In order to prevent Rick's posh condo from being wiped off the face of the space-time continuum, he must undo the Battle of Utopolis. Oh yeah, the Utopolins are in the two. So I guess one of the, uh, one of the big things we can talk about with this game is how it's, uh, Oh no! You can see uh, my life bar is taking damage by not being by being hit by things. No, we're gonna explode! You can see, and the space time just collapses on itself because we're so bad at this game. Fortunately, we can undo it all with the circle button. Really, the only other button besides the uh, analog stick or the D-pad to move up and down between them that you use. Um, so it makes it a very, very simple, simple game. And we're just gonna we're just gonna fly right back to the beginning. You like the beginning part? Because I like the beginning part, we're just gonna we're gonna play it again. But this time we're gonna play it right. We're gonna play it better. So nice and easy when there's not notes, you can just look at the left side of the screen and follow the uh, track that way. But then once the <laughs> you gotta be careful because once those notes show up, it's like, alright, this is what we're following now. This is the little uh, path of breadcrumbs. And hopefully it doesn't throw you off somewhere and screw you up. So, uh, I guess one of the cool things we can talk about is uh, how you have this idea that not only do the notes line up with the beat of the music, but also the firing behind you, um, and also just moving itself. There's so many intricate things that are involved with keeping a rhythm and keeping a tempo uh, that you also you have uh, this kind of yin and yang to um, keeping keeping a beat, basically. Um, not only is it when you fire, but when you don't fire is also a, a part of the song, essentially. And so it's kind of a really cool take on what it means to make games as objects. So you have times when an object comes in contact with the spaceship, and when it doesn't, because when we don't have things to unshoot, that's also still part of the song. Another thing we have is um, a pretty uh, interesting. We, got, we can do like a critique on games glorification of violent actions with this. The idea is that um, Rick Rocket is forced to undo all of his violent actions and undo his one-man war with the Exnorians um, from end back to beginning. And so it's, like, it's basically the opposite and it takes on this entirely new form where um, a side-scrolling shooter is all about just destroying and destroying and just leaving it behind. All the wreckage just in your wake. And this time you have to um, deal with that, basically. It's like, oh my god, I'd never even thought of how much I had fired during that combat, or how much, how many things I had destroyed in the wake. Um, now it doesn't address it too, like, in your face about it, or else it would have done like, there would be something about like having innocence around, or having something to not unfire, I don't know, something like that, but uh, 
in this it's it's kind of a it's just a very different take on video games and something that's probably I feel is very often clamored for. So this is a very very different enemy we're fighting right now. Uh, the cool thing is that uh, with the graphics of the game, there are <laughs> I totally I lost my rhythm just because I was so busy so getting I was so in the flow of dodging stuff and it was so stressful. <laughs> Um, God, what was I saying? Um, oh, the uh, the coolest thing about the just the graphical idea of this game is that the graphics are a part of um, the game, down to the minute minutia details of these trails, the the trails of your lasers, the, the like fumes or um, energy particles that they exude, create this light that is part of the track that you can follow to lead you in, and so the track always shows up right before shots come out, out at you, so you can use that as the player, as well as it being a part of the, the whole story and the whole of what's going on, so you can see there's no bottom two rows anymore because we're stuck on reds and greens right now. Alright, another mission successful. So that'll be it for the uh, introduction of this game. Thanks for watching. We're going to have two more episodes. If you have any questions about anything, um, please let me know. We're going to keep analyzing this game into a much greater detail now that we have a grasp on what's going on. Um, another six levels. Thank you, guys. See you later.